Before we begin this project, I'd like to offer a disclaimer. We will be discussing shows that touch on body image and the altering of one's personal appearance, as well as shows that will delve into the complexities of toxic relationships. If you find any of those subjects to be personally triggering, I'd like to encourage you to watch this project cautiously. For that reason, viewer discretion is advised. During my childhood, when most people relied on cable TV versus the assortment of various streaming services we use today, it was easy to flick on the television set and tune in to whatever looked interesting. And there were indeed many chances for viewers to become hooked by a dramatic concept, only to find themselves wondering how in the world that show was allowed to air given its subject matter. I'm not just talking about your day-to-day -day soap opera style reality dramas, though those did come with their own drawbacks, but rather TV series that put morality to the test, shows that relied heavily on the wow factor, while in turn sacrificing human morals. Shows where contestants who were fragile and self-conscious were made into props for the viewing audience's pleasure. And while there are indeed many shows that I could include in this first episode, Today I'll be focusing on three that I've personally viewed myself, in part or in full. From a weight loss challenge that turned into a body shaming contest, to a show where contestants are made to ruin one another's dreams, to a series that takes the term toxic to a new level, here are three TV shows that shouldn't have aired, in my opinion. Number one, Bridal Plasty. I'm beginning this list strong by starting with a hidden nightmare named Bridal Plasty. This American reality television series originally made its name on the E! Network in 2010. The show was centered around 12 brides who were competing not only for the chance to win a dream wedding, but also for the chance to receive a handful of plastic surgery procedures to enhance their looks before the big day. This show was shot down before it could even gain its footing, ending after just one season. And, just in case you can't tell why by the description, allow me to regale you with the gory details. During the beginning of the first episode, you're introduced to the brides that'll be competing for the grand prize. Each of them talk about their misgivings, the things they'd like to change about their appearances, and how such changes will ultimately lead to their ideal wedding. Now honestly, I have nothing against good old competition, but when you're putting your body on the line to compete, things become personal. Each bride was set on having their looks altered in some way and that became a part of what they were led to believe would create their perfect wedding day. The issue with that is that a lot of the contestants seemingly had no need for any alteration. They were naturally beautiful, just as they were. In fact, some of them were even criticized by other contestants because they felt as if they deserved revision more than those who were heralded as already being pleasing to the eyes. That aside, each contestant was inspected before the beginning of the competition by a prominent plastic surgeon. He took note of the changes they desired and pointed out a few of his own, which most of the brides eagerly agreed with. From large to small, no procedure was left out of consideration. But, as if having your body roved over by a plastic surgeon wasn't enough, he would present each bride's story for the entire group, going over the changes they'd like to have, and would win if they did, in fact, compete long enough to be crowned the winner. And let me just tell you, this part of the series was incredibly hard to watch. Not only were most of the brides embarrassed to have their near-nude pictures displayed on a large screen for the other contestants to see, but it was near heartbreaking to see some of the alterations they felt were necessary to make them, quote-unquote, beautiful enough to confidently take part in their own wedding. Unfortunately, the toxicity doesn't stop there. No, this show is just getting started. Much like any elimination-type series, the brides were put through multiple challenges each episode, and a bride was eliminated during the conclusion. The winner of each week's wedding-themed challenge would be rewarded by receiving one of their plastic surgery procedures from their wish list, which was established at the beginning of the series. Aside from that, there were small prizes handed out to the rest of the competitors, so long as you weren't among those who were last to finish. That's where things get even more disheartening. Eliminations were performed during each episode, where the brides who'd outperformed their competitors would be forced to eliminate one of the two remaining brides who were in the lowest standing. This led to many tense, tear-filled moments that were painful to watch. As the series continued, it was shocking to see the amount of toxicity that began to circulate among the brides as they compared themselves to one another, shot for the goal of winning, and were repeatedly beaten down during eliminations, 
where the losing bride would be served the line. You will still have your wedding, but it just won't be perfect. From one of the most grating and seemingly heartless show hosts I've ever watched on TV. Now I am aware that she had a role to play, but her constant smile that seemed almost fake and her model-ready appearance served as a sore reminder for the losing brides that they may never have themselves as put together as she appeared. Okay, I may be being a bit harsh, but out of all the people on the show, this woman uttering those final lines always made my heart hurt. With a toxic premise in which a plastic surgeon picked apart wanting women's bodies, a horrifying elimination process that brought multiple brides to tears, and the emphasis on picture-perfect appearances to make or break a wedding, this show undoubtedly had it all. They hit on a handful of weak points, and as if that wasn't enough, during this process, the brides were kept away from their husbands-to-be, completely, only to be shown once their transformation was finished, if they were so lucky as to receive everything on their wish list, making them the ultimate winner of the show. Thankfully, this harmful series only aired for one season, and then its reign of terror ended. However, if you're interested in seeing the travesty firsthand, the first few episodes can be found here on YouTube. I caution you to watch carefully. Despite being acceptable on TV, it features a lot of heartbreaking moments, partial nudity, semi-surgical scenes, and a handful of images of vulnerable women being marked up like cuts of meat. That being said, you've been warned. This is all I'm willing to say on this sad show, so I'll be moving on now. Number two, Temptation Island. Second on my list today is a more recently discussed show by the name of Temptation Island. Now, I'm not going to lie, I saw the trailer for a recent season of this series just before it began airing in my area, and I was immediately caught up in its apparent drama. But the more I became invested in the show, the more repulsed I was by the content. Now, some may find this one to be a bit less problematic than the show mentioned above, and they'd be right in some regards. But it definitely has its share of cringeworthy moments, where the questionable motives of the creators were definitely brought under scrutiny. Now, it has to be said that I'm not necessarily a fan of reality TV dating shows. I think any relationship that can stand the test of a competition is definitely admirable. But once the cameras are turned off, anything goes. And a lot of the relationships we idolize from TV fall apart once they're no longer in the spotlight and are faced with the real world. That aside, this series first aired on Fox and was picked up later and revived by the USA Network in 2019. The very first season attracted immediate controversy from its viewing audience, performing poorly during its second and third seasons. It wasn't until the revamped version of this debated show premiered on the USA Network that it came back into the spotlight and was targeted once again, going on to produce two additional seasons which were, per my knowledge, judged as harshly as the first by various outlets. If at first you don't succeed, try, 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 try again. But if you don't succeed after that, well, maybe it's time to give up. If you're a reality TV dating show series, that is. The premise of this show was simple. The creators tossed several current couples into a living situation in which they were forced to share housing arrangements with several singles in order to truly test the bonds of their relationships. Now, I haven't necessarily watched enough of this show to tell you what happens every single episode, but know that mainly it's a lot of the same drama on repeat. You've got couples splitting up, singles swooping in, new couples being formed, new couples breaking apart, old couples coming back together, lies, barely edited steamy scenes, and a whole lot of drama that after a few hours became a bit like watching a train wreck on repeat with fireworks in the background, you know, to keep you entertained. During its runtime, you had couples you'd be rooting for break up. You had singles that you hated, creating drama for seemingly more solid couples. And you had competition between all the male and female counterparts as they struggled to live in an atmosphere steeped in toxicity and constant uncertainty. Let me tell you, if someone pitched this idea to me and asked if me and my significant other were interested, I'd have bought an RV and left the state. Not because we're not strong as a couple, but because it's incredibly toxic to create an inescapable situation in which your relationship is tested so hard that it has no room for recovery. Living in that constant state of concern mixed with arousal and confusion isn't good for you mentally or physically. 
It's simply a recipe for disaster. Entertaining TV, sure, for a bit, but completely toxic in its presentation and duration. Absolutely. This was one that was incredibly hard for me to watch, especially given the fact that I truly didn't agree with the way this show gained its viewing audience and kept them involved. Again, some people enjoy that sort of drama, but for me it becomes very unwanted very quickly. And given this show's past reception, I can only guess that in some way, others must have felt the same. Why this continues to be revived and renewed is completely beyond me. But it may be time to assess things and turn towards a new type of drama. This one's absolutely run its course. It showcases what relationships shouldn't be, emphasizes the topics of lust and disloyalty, and treats its contestants like showpieces to be tossed around into interesting circumstances, which, more often than not, lead to their downfall. Tears were shed, lives were ruined, and I turned the channel. Not everyone will agree with my inclusion of this show in today's list, and I want you to know that even if you don't agree with me, you're not wrong. This show is baseline entertaining to a certain degree, but in all actuality, I've seen more harm come from this show than good, for its contestants and even for viewers who are given this model to follow. Good relationships are tested, but over time, with the general flow of life and time to recover and recenter when things go wrong, these contestants were thrown into a pressure cooker, and in all honesty, most of them ended up overdone. That being said, you know where I stand. I'll leave the rest up to you. Since this series is still currently showing on TV, you can catch reruns on the USA Network, or shorts, here on YouTube, which will chop the drama up into bite-sized pieces if you so desire. I definitely encourage you to watch that versus the entire series episode by episode. I wouldn't give this one the time of day, guys. Either way, this show definitely earned its spot on today's list due to its concerning contents and highlighting of deep emotional relationship turmoil. I will tell you this though, I'm glad to be done discussing Temptation Island because it was steadily becoming tempting for me to break the television. Number three, The Biggest Loser. The last show on today's list is actually one that I know a lot of people are fans of. How do I know this? Because I was once a fan. Yes, that's right. I watched a handful of the series back when I was a child and had an overweight family member who enjoyed watching the show themselves. In fact, I even enjoyed it, tuning in with my family to watch each episode and rooting for my favorite contestants. It was only years later that I realized how toxic the show's format was and became repulsed by my time as a viewer. But here I go again, getting ahead of myself as usual. Let's go back to the beginning and talk about what this show is about, for those who don't know. The Biggest Loser was a reality TV show that focused on obese contestants who would compete against each other in teams in an attempt to lose the most possible weight. As incentive, there was a cash prize and bragging rights on the table. Apparently, there have been different versions of this show in different countries, but the main premise remains throughout. The overall goal is to lose the highest percentage of weight in an attempt to become what the show heralded as the biggest loser, as in the person to lose the most weight, just to clarify. Now I'm going to stop right there and address the name. That to me was a PR nightmare from the beginning, not because of its intended meaning in reference to weight, but because of its correlation to the offensive term biggest loser, which had made its rounds in middle school when I was younger. At that time, just being a loser wasn't enough. Instead, some were termed as the biggest loser, implying they were beyond the capacity of a normal loser, if that makes any sense. Kids are strange. And believe me, even as a child, I sort of felt that the title for this show was unfitting, or to put it more blandly, offensive. But somehow production went through with it, and it was a title that stuck, becoming a household name for a while during the show's prime. That was until people started to pull it apart and locate the more unsavory bits. And there were. Unsavory bits, that is. As far as reality TV shows that focus on competition go, one has to be particularly careful in what they have to do to be marked as a competitor and what's required to win said competition. I believe the goal of this show was indeed pure. Pair obese competitors with highly qualified trainers on teams in which they can experience good, healthy competition in their ultimate quest to lose weight. 
Even my explanation here sounds righteous in presentation. And as a kid, that's more or less how I saw it, aside from the name. This show is packed with tough love, moments of celebration, and powerful lifestyle changes. Unlike the other shows on this list, this one definitely had a premise that I could get behind. That was until I did what most people did and watched the effect that it had, not only on the contestants long term, but on some of its viewers. Once again though, let me back up. There was always one particular part of the show that I found most interesting as a kid, which were the team weigh-ins that often appeared during the episodes. This was the part of the show in which the contestants would step onto a scale and have their weight logged for that part of the competition. It was a moment that viewers grew to anticipate throughout the show's runtime. But this, I believe, is where the toxicity started. Because, put very simply, it required highly fragile and vulnerable participants to strip down to barely nothing and then weigh themselves before a crowd of other competitors. For those with weight issues, their own self-confidence can already be rather low. So, expecting them to confidently weigh themselves with others looking on can be daunting, to say the least. Obviously, these contestants knew what was required of them before signing up, but that aside, when they didn't lose weight, that fact was made known with grand fanfare, and that good old healthy competition was tipped on its head. If you didn't lose weight, that reflected badly on your team, and sometimes even on your trainer. So there was a ton of pressure heaped on these contestants' backs to give it their all and avoid the shame that would come during the weigh-ins if they didn't. Looking back on the entire thing, if that had been my family member up there, I'd most likely have been horrified for them, whether they'd lost weight or not. It's an incredibly vulnerable position to be put in, even if you do have high self-esteem or are comfortable with your body. But to imagine those struggling to make things better, still having to shoulder the weight of the external pressure and embarrassment, is almost unbearable to me myself. Anyone with a fragile self-image could easily be emotionally torn to bits by such a public display of what the show would term as failure on some front. In reality, a lot of weight loss journeys can plateau at some point, but this isn't normally seen as a bad thing, just an indication that further change is required that may differ from what you're already doing. This show, though, seems to have missed that, at least to my knowledge but I could be wrong. After all, I've only watched about half of the available seasons in my area. That aside, the second topic that I found hard was how some of the trainers pushed the contestants. At times, it was exciting seeing them rise to the challenge, but sometimes it seemed as if they were being forced beyond their own means, which could cause viewers to put themselves through the same rigors in an attempt to emulate the show and its success. And that's not all either. The diets shown on the show were also viewed as being slightly extreme, along with the sorts of exercises the contestants were thrown into after having their everyday intake reduced. Now, I'm no nutritionist or health coach, nor am I a personal trainer of any sort, but I do know that to be one, you need to connect with your client where they are, not force them to take four steps when they can only manage two. The best of the best will encourage them to try three, and if that goes well, shoot for three and a half, with the goal of reaching for four. And, as far as I've heard at times, this was what the show failed to do. So far as I've heard, a lot of the training sets and diets shown were actually under fire for being unhealthy in the long run, which is something I definitely found concerning, given how many people who were watching their weight were also viewing the show. That, along with the various accounts of contestants returning to their habits and gaining weight once again, made this show a hard one to celebrate for me in later life. After an experience like what was featured on the show, I can only imagine that it was incredibly hard to replicate a lot of those practices once contestants returned to their real life. This show, interestingly enough, aired for 17 seasons during the year 2004 until the year 2016, before the producers finally got with the program and realized their mistakes. The entire show was revived for an 18th season, and was rumored to have sported a far more realistic and more gentle approach. However, many who have viewed it have said that it can still be rather upsetting to watch at certain points. I personally wouldn't know, as I haven't kept up with the series, but if anyone has, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. 
Self-image can be a very touchy topic. For me, I've always been very tall and thin, making it hard to find clothes that were long enough for me and gaining me the nickname The Skeleton in middle school. It was something that I truly found hard during my years growing up as a child because it was hard to wear what I wanted and incredibly hard to put on weight of any type. As I grew older, I began to make peace with my body image and as I matured into an adult, it became easier to gain weight where I would like it and find more suitable clothes from different brands. You may be asking me why I'm sharing this and that's because everyone has a journey down a path they have to travel when it comes to looking in the mirror and liking or approving of what they see. That journey can ultimately be made easier or harder by those around us and how we let their words affect us. But it can also be changed or impacted by shows like Bridalplasty or The Biggest Loser, which showcase some toxic practices that are openly approved by media outlets to grace TVs everywhere becoming so accessible that anyone interested could openly watch. People may be on a weight loss journey that's ground to a halt because of things they've seen on shows like The Biggest Loser, making them even more self-conscious. Someone could be on the road to self-acceptance in light of a recent engagement, only to be torn down by a show like Bridalplasty. These things do happen. So whether you're happy in your skin or you want to improve your body image, that journey is unique to you. You're an individual, and something that works for you may not work for someone else. This is why we have trained professionals to evaluate our health. And while most beauty is seen to be skin deep, the true worth of a person is in their heart. I always tell people the story of a socialite who was a model and was considered to be the most beautiful by her peers. But her attitude was nasty and she devalued those around her. Because of that, her beauty seemed far less important, far less appealing and she lost the love of family and friends alike. Conversely, if you have a kind attitude and an open heart, those who truly seek friendship will locate you based on your non-physical attributes. If you're here watching this video today and you don't currently like what you see in the mirror, remind yourself that you're an individual. There is no other you in the entire world. No one can tell you what to look like because no one is you. If you have something you'd like to work on, go for it. If you have an ideal goal for your weight, meet with your doctor or nutritionalist and take things day by day. If you've been mocked by peers, employers, or family members for your looks, remember, you are loved and valued by those whose opinion truly matters, and those whose opinion truly matters will tell you that. Also, keep in mind that not everyone who ridicules you is correct. As I mentioned above, I was mocked for my looks and called names during my younger years. Yet today, I've happily modeled, I cosplay on a regular basis, and I really enjoy my body type. If I could have a conversation with younger me, I'd tell her that she'd arrive one day and she'd be truly happy in her skin, despite all of the naysayers and the bullies. And remember, most often, people who are displeased with themselves will seek to make others feel that way so they don't feel so alone. A kind word can brighten someone's day, but a negative comment could darken their entire week. So spread kindness wherever you can. Brighten people's days, don't darken their weeks. The more you do this, the more others will take note. If we all preach this sort of message, perhaps shows like the two I mentioned above wouldn't exist. Or maybe that's holding out too much hope. Either way, don't let a filter define who you are or what beauty should look like. Create your own beautiful each day when you wake up, simply by being you. After all, like I mentioned, there's no one like you. You're completely original, or as I like to call it, limited edition. Treat yourself with that value, and ignore those who are too nearsighted to see that. On another note, good relationships do go through rigors and trials. That's just a fact of life. But one thing we don't need to be doing is placing things before our eyes that propagate negative stereotypes and promote infidelity, disloyalty, and unnecessary drama. Shows like Temptation Island pack a heavy punch and sow seeds of distrust even between those whose relationship is strong. Viewers watching these shows can even become disenchanted by their own relationships simply by consuming media which showcases harmful practices. I encourage you to trust your partner, treat them with respect, work on your communication, become a good listener, and you'll avoid a lot of the problems that these contestants had to muck through during the show's runtime. Strong relationships are built on these concepts, 
and they hold firm when storms strike, whereas shallow relationships are easily swayed by the winds of any small gale. Take time to assess where you are today and make plans for fortifying your bond in the future if needed. Avoiding shows that shake your foundations and make unneeded renovations seem like necessary changes. Trust me, you'll be better off because of it. Alright guys, thank you for tuning in to hear about my top three picks for TV shows that shouldn't have aired. I'm hoping to continue this series with a few new additions depending on how this episode goes. My Twisted Music series has actually been a bit of a hit with you guys, so we'll see where it goes from here. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see an episode two, please be sure to share it, comment below with your thoughts on the subject, and subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. The only way I can continue to make content like this is if it does well, so if you enjoyed, be sure to smash that like button. That being said, if you ever want to reach out and tell your story, the comment section below is a judgment-free zone, so feel free to speak your mind. I love hearing from you guys and I look forward to reading through all of your comments. All right guys, this is Miles signing off and as always, thank you for watching and stay awesome.